Hello my fellow humans and welcome back to Scatter Love Tarot with your girl coming at you with another pick a card reading. Today we are going to do how do you trigger people. We're going to really look into your gifts and your abilities and your talents. So it's really more focused on you and how that affects other people, not really what people are thinking about. We're going to draw on the channel. We're really going to draw away from that. Uh, it's just really heavy, heavy energy to tap into what everybody else is thinking about you. And honestly, in all truth, that really takes away from our own journey because we're focusing on others rather than focusing on developing our gifts and our skills and our in our talents so that's something I would like to say today first I do want to spend a moment saying thank you to those of you that continue to be a supportive part of this journey I'm truly honored to be sharing this time and space with you for anyone that's new here welcome this is that reminder that we're all here sharing this human experience and that this is a safe space for you to show up as your highest most aligned loving authentic self Remember that these are general readings, so take what resonates and leave what does not. Make sure that you do like, comment, and subscribe down below. If you are interested in supporting the channel further, you will find all those links necessary to do so below in the description box. You can email me for a personal reading, and I will get you out further information from there. You may also follow me on over to my podcast at Scatter Love Radio, which is on Spotify. And if you're interested in joining as a member, the link below will take you to the landing page that will show you the options that I have available as well as what comes with each option. So I do hope to see you on memberships. If not, thank you so much for your continued support here. And with that being said, I've got everything set. We were going to choose today from the Talisman Oracle cards. I've got them shuffled. So let's hop to your prayer and we'll get this reading underway. I also have another one that's going to be in the How, to, How Do You series is what I'm going to call it. And I'm excited to bring that one up. So it will be out. The next reading actually is going to be that one. So keep an eye out for that. But yeah, we really want to stay focused on our own journey, right? And we're always worried about when people are focusing on us. But the more that we look at those those readings that are all about what people secretly think of us, we're focusing on them instead of our own journey. So my beloved source, this prayer is for any and all who come onto this reading and onto this space, whether it's for the entire time or for a moment's time. I ask that you wrap them up in their truth and remind them that they are so much more powerful than they give themselves credit for, that they are capable of truly shedding that cloak of burdens and blockages that have been placed on us by society that have been put on us thinking that we're not good enough or thinking that we have to impress people in a certain way that we can let that go and that what everyone else is doing on their journey is truly their own business and not our business and equally so that what we are doing on our journey is our business to attend to and that that really draws back our power and reminds us that every step that we take is another step that we can control, that we can truly allow ourselves to step into our destined purpose. I ask that you remind each and every one of the strength that they possess, that they are held and supported so much on this journey and that they are never alone. As these words are spoken unto this space and unto this reading, so shall they be. Amen. Aho. I say thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my beloved source. Thank you so much. So let me go ahead and get that hung up over there. And, you know, just real quickly, you might ask, well, how is this different? Like I said, if you skipped over the intro and just came to the prayer and the shuffle, this is a lot different because we're going to be focusing more on you. And these are going to be things that you can actually look into further to develop further and know that if you're triggering people most of the time, you're doing the right thing, right? You're doing exactly what you're meant to be doing. All right. So for pile number one source, what 
Talisman Oracle card will help us better understand how does pile number one trigger people. Thank you. And for pile number two source, what Talisman Oracle card will better help us understand how does pile number one trigger people, or pile number two trigger people. How does pile number two trigger people? Thank you, source. And for pile number three, what talisman oracle card will help us better understand how does pile number three trigger people okay thank you source and a collective me message on the bottom is safe travel so some of you could astral travel some of you could actually be physically traveling and that's how you trigger people because you're constantly meeting new people some of you live near the mountains. Some of you live near the ocean. I feel like a huge message with this card is that you've spread your wings and taken flight. And you're really learning how to embrace your own journey. And that in itself triggers the demons inside of others because it makes them feel that sense of them not getting in touch with their truth, right? So the more that you stand in your truth, you're going to have people who are inspired by you, but you're equally so going to have people that are triggered by you for standing in that truth, right? All right, so for pile number one today's Choose Your Amethyst, we have this beautiful dark piece of amethyst. If we can get it to, there we go. For pile number two, we have this beautiful piece of amethyst. And for pile number three, we have this beautiful piece of amethyst. So we do have pile one, pile two, and pile three. Whichever pile you felt drawn to, that should be the pile for you. And I will see you over on your chosen pile. Hello, my fellow human. If you were drawn to this beautiful piece of amethyst, or if you were drawn to this card during the shuffle, then this is gonna be your reading on how do you trigger people. Uh, first thing I do want to say is thank you for those of you that continue to be a supportive part of this journey. I'm truly honored to be sharing this time and space with you. And for those of you that are new here, welcome. This is that reminder that we are all here sharing this human experience and that this is a safe space for you to show up as your highest, most aligned, loving, authentic self. And if remember, these are general readings. So take what resonates, leave what does not. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe down below. If you're interested in supporting the channel further, you will find all those links in the description box. You can email me for a personal reading, and I'll get you out further information from there. You can follow me on over to my podcast on Spotify at Scatter Love Radio. And if you're interested in becoming a member, the link below will take you to the landing page, which will show you the three levels I have available, as well as the options that come with each level. So I do hope to see you on memberships. If not, thank you for your continued support here. I truly do appreciate you. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and hop to it. Um, quickly, though, I do want to mention, in case you skipped the intro, that these readings are shifting so we're not going to be focusing on so much the other person we really are going to be focusing on your gifts your talents your skills how you trigger other people this is going to be about you and the reason that this is happening across the channel is because it's a really heavy energy to tap into those lower vibrations of what other people are going through and when we're so focused on how we're affecting other people, 
rather than the things that we can grow within ourselves, we're actually busy not paying attention to our own journey. So I'm really going to be shifting the channel onto focus of you as my collective and going from there. But we will still do readings kind of like this. But again, today's reading is going to be mostly focused on you, how you trigger people not what people think about it or what people are secretly thinking about you okay perfect so source for pile number one how does pile number one trigger other people source how does pile number one trigger other people what can you tell us about this how does pile number one trigger other people source wow it's so loud when i don't have a cloth down there Okay, so we have the seventh house, Aquarius, and Uranus all the way over here, which you can't see, but I will slide that in. Because you have different types of relationships. This could even be, it's interesting, I actually heard spiritual relationships, so you could have a very strong bond with your uh, guides and with your angels, even with your ancestors. Uh, it's unconventional, right? Anytime we have Aquarius energy, we're really looking at something that's super unconventional, something that is a, a trend in itself, right? Something that is more focused on the unusual, unorthodox side of things. But when we have Uranus, it also indicates a big change. And so it feels like you go through a lot of changes, even just on your day-to-day -day life. And that's something that triggers a lot of people because they want stability and you are the complete opposite of being stable because you're in the flow of change right and change is really the only stable constant that every human will experience but so many people are so resistant to that and with the seventh house here it shows that you actually have quite a strong connection relationship to that ability to flow with change and to embrace what change is bringing for you which makes you unusual, right? It's like if change happens, like you're fine with it. You don't let it just tear you up or let you get so overwhelmed that you can't handle it. You're actually very emotionally uh, detached and kind of aloof when things like that happen. Like it's not going to disturb your peace because you've already had to go through so many changes and some of those changes really did affect your peace. And you realize that whether or not change is happening or it or if you are in a place of being unbalanced the main thing is is when you stay in a sense of understanding yourself and being okay with yourself you actually are capable of staying very harmonious within the chaos okay and so chaos is constantly happening around you but you're very much out of the loop while being in the center of the loop, if that makes sense, right? It's like you're in the center of everything going on, but you're also emotionally outside the box where it's just kind of like, okay, cool. Like you can let all that stuff affect you or you can focus on how you can become stronger, better, and more in tune with your journey. The other thing is, is that everywhere you go that triggers other people is that they watch and they see how friendly you are so they might not even know you but they see you just connecting with strangers and going into places like you've never met a stranger in your life you've never met somebody that you couldn't get along with at least in the beginning right like when you first interact with someone and that's something that also triggers people because you're very outgoing and people want to be around you because of that so you could have a lot of stable business relationships a very stable love relationship in your life very stable friendships or even a fa stable family it doesn't have to be you could just have soul family and something like that but again from the beginning it was this energy of being really really connected with your guides and your angels so just having that intuitive sense about you is something that really triggers people because they feel like they're not able to get to that level and they see you just walking naturally in your intuition like i split the deck <laughs> and we have the high the high priestess or the popes here with the five of wands or five of swords in the reverse next to it this is what they're mostly triggered by 
right? Because the Five of Swords, when it's in the reverse, is talking about negativity that surrounds us and what's peeking out. Yeah, we have the magician here. And so you have this ability to manifest based on what your intuitions are telling you, based on what your guides are telling you. And this is why people are triggered by you, because you make it seem so flawless. So how are people triggered? Or I'm sorry, how does pile number one trigger people source how does pile number one trigger people okay thank you how does pile number one trigger people awesome how does pile number one trigger people source thank you i hear that song by tlc don't go chasing waterfalls. You stick to the rivers and the lakes that you're used to. Yeah, I know that's a love song, but it's like people are trying to chase your abilities. And instead of like just starting, start, you know, start at step one. <laughs> like, let's just start at step one. Let's start with quieting our minds so we can hear our guides like people are really trying to go from one to a thousand here because that's what they are seeing you do but that's not necessarily the truth right okay so move these into camera i actually had more room than i was planning on having which is fine so you've had a lot of disconnected relationships where you have let people go people let you go and that's the other thing people see you get so many offers from people how many times can we say people in a sentence right <laughs> the ones that are triggered by you are seeing you receive offers from others but see what they're not seeing is that this might not even be something that pans out right this could be someone who's trying to control you or someone who is trying to help liberate you but it's like they're just concerned about the fact that you have so many offers and romantic offers, friendship offers, you know, business situationship offer, offers, clientele, whatever it is, you know, and, and the reality of the situation is, is they feel like they're the only ones in the world that have no luck getting any connect, kind of connection, right? And it triggers them because they feel like they don't have the ability to draw in the types of connections that you do with the types of people that you do and I feel like that's just simply from your experience you've had to learn the hard way that not everybody is for you and even a lot of these offers might not have the best of intentions for you and so you recognize right at the start that they're not going to work out and you know when when we trigger most people the ones that are triggered by us are usually only people who see us for a very short time if they do see us for a long time, like they're not seeing the whole picture. So we have justice coming in. We have the house of God in the reverse. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. This is making sense. So there's a lot of, you actually trigger a lot of romantic relationships, potentials. So whoever's sexually interested in you, I'm going to say is because we have the, the page of wands in the reverse. This is people who are sexually interested in you they see you they see you being amazing they want that relationship with you because you're so intuitive you're so connected and they're like well if i had someone like that on my side then i would be all lucky like i could play the lotto and i'd win every time right even though we all know as psychics that's not how it works okay that's just we're not here to use it for our own gains like that that's just not how it works okay <laughs> But that's not how everybody thinks, okay? And so that's why a lot of people are so disconnected. And they see you connected, and they're like, I wish I had that. But also they're trying to use it for their own their own benefit here, right? And we see that you have already dealt with people like that. Like, you've already dealt with people who are one-sided. You've already dealt with people who wanted you because of a sexual connection. You've dealt with people who just wanted to turn your life upside down with the house of God here in the reverse and your your justice your justice is balancing all this out right you're balancing out karma if you ever notice in the tarot Marseille this is one of the original uh, tarot decks right and the writer 
Wade Smith turned the justice into the number 11 and the strength into the number 8 card, whereas in Tarot Marseille, it's the opposite. Strength is number 11 and justice is number 8. That's the original numbering system for the major arcanas, okay? And the reason that I believe it was Crowley who did that was so that it fell in line with the zodiac wheel. So obviously Leo is in the eighth month, right? And <laughs> then you have Libra, which is in October. And so that's why that's why Crowley did that it was just to kind of like go with the zodiac wheel. So there was some semblance of how things were playing out. Okay, so <laughs> through that. Here you have the Justice card is actually connected to our karma, right? Because it's finally balancing things out. It's finally balancing out the hardships and the good ships and the good ships, if that's even a word. <laughs> and so what triggers people is they see you in this place now of justice, of receiving your justice, of you getting the good in your life. Things are starting to balance out for you, the harmony, the peace. Like I said earlier, when we threw the dice, it was like, you're not bothered by the chaos. Like, you're in the middle of it all, but it just doesn't affect you. Like, it maybe once used to, right? Maybe when chaos came in or something like that happened, maybe you were the first one to just kind of be like, I'm jumping ship because I don't want to be in this energy. I don't want to deal with this, right? And it's like, you have this touch of grace and this humanity be beyond what people are considering right like it's just beyond you have a very beautiful soul that is very present and you're showing how developed your consciousness is and how rational you are filled with love you can still be logical and rational and come from a place of unconditional love no matter what's going on outside of you and so this is how you trigger people is because you're not bothered by the incessant insanity of everyone else and when i say that it's because everybody else loves drama right they love drama and do you know i never ever trust the people who are like i hate drama i don't do anything that's dramatic because usually they're the ones that are the most dramatic you know and that's just from personal experience but it's like you don't like drama but you're also not out there like, I hate drama. I can't stand drama. Get out of my face, drama. Like, you're not like that, right? You're just like, you just know in your heart of hearts, like, I'm just not going to cause drama. I'm, I don't like drama. When drama is happening, I'm just going to kind of remove myself and go over here and be nice and peaceful and calm and good and whatever. And I feel like most of your drama has come from past relationships where, you know, lovers just left you broken hearted right it was like you you trusted these people and they broke your trust it was like some some of them could have up and left you and they put you in a in a very precarious position because they just left from what seemed security a lot of chaos and confusion with that and and not understanding like like left in a place of not understanding why and you had to heal from that and you found that balance in your life but we also have this energy of ego and pride and it's like that leads to destruction right and so you see here that a lot of times you trigger people because they see you as another notch in the bedpost or they see you as a trophy i have the hiccups they see you as a trophy on their wall and that's all they see you as they don't see you as somebody who's a real person i'm a real boy like <laughs> okay pinocchio wow that came out so fast <laughs> that's why i laughed i wasn't even in control of it it just popped out like okay here we go <laughs> But that's what I, I'm a real person. You better treat me like I'm a real person. But that's also your justice in the situation because you've learned that most people have ulterior motives when it comes to you. And they're very immature in the way that they deal with you. And you have had to leave a lot of these people in the dust, even if you've never met them before and they try to approach you, like you immediately know whether or not this person has good intentions for you or if they're just trying to, you know, 
whip it and unzip it and whip it, you know? <laughs> like, oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, it's just funny some of the stuff that's coming out. Uh, anyways, yeah, that's why you trigger people, like, because you are very aware of your standards. More importantly, you're very settled and okay with your value and your worth. And a lot of people wish that they had that, but they're not willing to go through the trials and the chaos in order to get there and to learn the lessons from that, right? Like, exactly. Wow. I'm so glad this came out. We have house two, physical security, possessions, material values, and self-worth. It's your self-worth. That's what triggers other people because you know you're worthy of respect. You're worthy of decency, right? You are worthy of people showing up and seeing you as the beautiful person that you are because you do. You know, and if you don't, sorry, there's the door. Don't let it hit you in the rear end on the way out. You see yourself as this beautiful god or goddess, this beautiful king or queen, or this beautiful royal person. Whatever it is, you just see yourself as amazing, and you should, right? And it's not even arrogance. Like, that's not what it is. Even though some people might label this as arrogance, it's not. It's, like, you're probably one of the most humble people on the face of the planet, but it doesn't mean that you can't be confident about yourself and your abilities. And that's what triggers a lot of people, because you're the embodiment of what everybody that meets you wishes that they were, but not everybody could be that. And you found loyalty to yourself and to your spiritual journey, right? You spread your wings and you're flying away. If you didn't catch the uh, shuffle, there's actually a message from the shuffle that might pertain to this as well. It oddly happens a lot with pile one. So I feel like pile one is usually the ones that watch the shuffle. So, <laughs> but we have this energy here where you're very emotionally mature and stable and free like the main thing here is a sense of freedom that you have and a lot of people are triggered by that there's so many people wow that's a lot we'll look at them we have use your mind wisely turn knowledge into wisdom and trust in the magic okay so I will, I'll keep them out, but this is, this is why people are jealous of you. You trust in the magic of source. You trust in your faith that things are going to work out for you, right? And you see yourself through eyes of unconditional love with 66 here. And you always find a solution to the problem. It's like people bring to you problems hoping to switch you up off your path. And you always have a solution because you're not emotionally involved. You turn knowledge into wisdom. That's just reiterating this. Because you're logical, you're reasonable and logical. This is really just confirming that energy that we saw on the reading so far. So what's on the bottom here? Yeah, <laughs> watch and wait. This is it. You just kind of let people tell you who they are. Sometimes you just draw back. It's like you may involve yourself in a conversation for a very short time for the sheer fact right of gaining information because everything that you're receiving is information and it tells you where a person's at and it's not good or bad it just simply is it's not like oh i'm gonna judge this person because of this it's just knowing that okay that's just not what i resonate with and you're gonna find people who resonate with that so good luck right like i'm just gonna go keep walking on my journey because that's what i've learned investment invest in your education make some big plans for the future take calculated risks but save something to fall back on like that's the thing you've invested in yourself and in your journey you could be coming up into a very prosperous time right now where you're making money and you're learning how to invest in long-term investments let's grab a shadow aspect here what's the shadow aspect that pile number one brings when they trigger other people needs i'm not surprised and guilty there's lying or cheating cheating going on maybe both it may take a confrontation to come clean yeah this does not surprise me at all needs flew out if emotional needs aren't being met it's time to reassess touch is important too and that's the thing you pay attention to what your needs are that's why you can stand in this place of understanding your truth and understanding who you are and knowing that not every relationship that you meet is good for you. 
no matter how positive a person may seem, no matter how upbeat a person may seem, that doesn't always mean that they're on the same journey as you. You know because there was a time where you were in a lower vibration and there may have been some people who betrayed you in that same type of energy where it's like, but they were so positive. They were so upbeat. Like, what happened? Yeah, connections. Look, I cannot make this up. We have tarantula connection coming out clarifying justice. That's exactly what you're receiving justice for. These old connections that left you stuck, that left you stagnant, that left you just feeling like you were drained and not worthy of anything good, but you have turned it around and found your worth. And you learn how to express and embody your truth. Right? And that's why you don't fall for these people who, you know, love bomb you, who give you everything that you think that they think you want to hear. And you're just like, I just want the truth. <laughs> right? I just want the truth. I want to embody the truth. But you're shining bright. And you're comfortable with who you are. And you're creating the life of your dreams. And you're not hesitating to manifest that. And this is why you trigger other people. Okay, and what do we have? People skills. Look, I what did I say? Oh my gosh, it says you have a flair for working well with others. You could be a diplomat, a counselor, a salesperson, or a head of a company. And didn't I say that in the beginning with the dice? People see you, and they might not know you from Adam, but they see you out with people, and how easy it is for you to talk to them, how you can network with others, how you can build connections with others, just very, very simply and easily. You stand out. You may be an oddball, but who cares? That's Aquarius energy anyways. Own that. Own that. You may have Aquarius, uh, Sun, Moon, Rising, or Venus. You may have Aquarius in the seventh house. You may have Aquarius in your rising. It's coming out again. You may have Aquarius in the eighth house, in the ninth house. Yeah, okay. So some of you have Aquarius very highly aspect in your chart. And if you don't, that's okay. It's okay to not have it in your chart, but to still be embodying aspects of that. We all, in, we, all of us embody traits and aspects of each zodiac sign. That's why we are the, we're the more, we're more than just the sum of our sun. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at your talisman oracle card. I'm going to read this from the book. Let go. Look, we have the crab here. It makes people crabby. Oh, crabby! All right, so let go, L. One, two, there it is. Here's the insignia. If you'd like to pause this and screenshot it and carry it with you, it's fine. Look, I cannot make this up. The first line says just like running water everything keeps constantly changing you've been holding on to a burden that's been slowing you down sometimes we know that it what that is other times we need to examine our needs and behavior often holding on comes from a need to control our life and surroundings it gives us comfort that we can direct the circumstances to avoid a painful path. But if we let go of the illusion of control, we can find peace and enjoy the ride. Being vulnerable offers an opportunity for connection and closure. The little crab has to learn to let things go. The flower in front of him is a delicate gift from nature to bring joy. And the affirmation here is I release this energy. See, I don't feel like you struggle with letting go. I feel like that's that's the main reason why people are triggered by you is because you let go so easily. Like you just, okay, this is not mine to hold on to. It'll work out the way that it's meant to. But if I don't work on myself, then I'm going to lose myself to this chaos. And that's not what I want at all because that's just overwhelming, right? So truthfully, people are are triggered by the fact that you are getting justice in your relationships you have these people skills you're manifesting the life of your dreams you're not falling for people just because they want to say sweet nothings in your ear and you know they're nothings you're expressing yourself fully and embodying your truth and you trust in this process wholly and fully with your heart 
And so this was overall an amazing reading. You have a beautiful energy about you. Own yourself, pile one, always, right? If you feel like this is your reading, leave a little spider emoji down below and say, I've let go of the hurts and pains from the past and I blossom like the beautiful lotus flower that I am. Leave me a thumbs up. I'm going to go ahead and leave it there and get on out of here. I do want to take a quick second to thank your guides, your spirit messengers, your angel source, and my guides for coming together to give us this amazing message. And until next time, pile number one, stay human. Bye. Hello, my fellow human. If you were drawn to this beautiful piece of amethyst, or if you were drawn to this card during the shuffle, then this is going to be your reading on how do you trigger people. First thing, I do want to say thank you to any and everyone that continues to be a supportive part of this journey. I'm truly honored to be sharing this time and space with you. And for those of you that are new here, welcome. This is that reminder that we're all here sharing this human experience and that this is a safe space for you to show up as your highest, most aligned, loving, authentic self. Keep in mind these are general readings, so take what resonates and leave what does not. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe down below. If you are interested in supporting the channel further, every link that you need you'll find in the description box below. You can email me for a personal reading and I'll get you out further information from there. You can follow me on over to my podcast on Spotify at Scatter Love Radio. And you can also join as a member and when you click the link it will take you to the landing page that shows you the levels that I have available as well as the options that come with each level so I do hope to see you over on memberships if not thank you for your continued support here and with that being said we'll hop to the reading and find out more about how you trigger people in case you skipped over the intro really quickly, I do want to point out that we're pulling away from the secret thinking about others, how other people secretly think about you, because the truth of the matter is, is that we're, we're focused on what everyone else is or how we're revolving around another person's uh, life. We're actually taking away time for us to focus on ourselves. How was this reading different, you may ask, because we're actually truly focusing on you and these are skills, talents, and abilities that you can develop further and continue to work on and the focus then gets drawn back to you rather than how it is on other people, right? We don't want people to only think negative things about us, but it's intriguing to me how we get so caught up in that as well. And so this journey is truly about focusing back on ourselves. And that's what these types of readings are doing. Okay. So let's hop to it and find out how does pile number two trigger other people source? What messages do you have for us? How does pile number two trigger other people? What would you like to say here, source? How does pile number two trigger other people? Okay, so we've got Pisces, Pluto in the 8th house. Interesting. A lot of water energy coming through here. Very spiritual. You're extremely psychic. Uh, you also have, I feel like you, hear, uh, you have clear audience and clear cognizance. Um, some of you might have clear sentience. And I don't remember what the taste or the smelling one is, but you may have those as well. You may have all your senses involved when it comes to your psychic abilities. For others of you, you're just extremely intuitive and you're capable of following that intuition into the unknown. Okay, you've gone through a lot of transformations. This is how you trigger people. I feel like this reading in itself is actually going to be focused on people who know you, who have seen you come a long way. Because you got involved in something that was very spiritual or you got involved in something that was very hush-hush or that maybe wasn't accepted by those around you. Like it just really disconnected you from the people that you knew the most. <clears throat> Especially with this 8th house energy here. And through that, you were able to develop this unique connection with yourself on your journey and, and really unfold. There's a lot of sexual energy coming through here. You know, sometimes we can really get involved in sexual transmutation. And if you don't know what that is and that message is not for you, 
but it does feel like you're just exuding a lot of sexual energy, a lot of divine feminine energy, a lot of just highly vibrational energy when it comes to creativity, when it comes to allowing yourself to transform, when it allows yourself to have egoic deaths and rebirths and really embrace the spiritual journey in itself. And this is what triggers a lot of people here. You bring out a lot of fear in others. You bring out a lot of guilt within others. You also, just by being yourself, highlight within others their own addictions that they're afraid to let go of, things that they're really afraid of releasing or things that they're really afraid of of walking away from because it's been something that felt so constant in their lives, even if it is just an illusion, right? Many of our addictions are illusions, even addictions to things like a way of being treated or a way of acting or even the phones and movies and being a shopaholic or anything like that. Like they're all illusions that we have to face. It doesn't mean that it doesn't feel real and that becomes our reality is how we feel. And so you have a tendency to really be someone who comes in and forces people to change because you've changed, but it does feel like the most that the people who get triggered the most by you are people who have seen you transform. You went from being one way to being an entirely different way. And now they have to face their own selves and they can't because they don't know where to start. And there's too much pride coming in where they don't want to ask you. And you're so fluid, right? You're just very fluid, not worrying about change. You're not like you're stubborn about changing, which means that you're always on the go, right? Like you're always working to change. You're always working to evolve. You're always working to grow more spiritually in touch with yourself. Like through that, you've definitely leveled up spiritually and psychically on your journey, which is amazing, right? And so you're always on the go and being fluid. And it's like, maybe some people tried to follow in suit with you, but because they were trying to match your pace after you'd been doing this for a long time, they couldn't keep up with you. And so they get triggered because they feel like you're just, you're, you're, you're gifted in a way that they never could be, which may or may not be true. We all have gifts. We all have abilities. We all have talents, right? No matter what they are, we can all access those. But it's like they're trying to, maybe you're on chapter 100 and they're on chapter 1 and they're comparing their chapter 1 to your chapter 100. And there is no comparison there because you've been doing it for a while. But there's too much pride coming in where they don't want to ask you for help. And equally so, they're seeing just how magnetic you're turning into. You know, anytime we're able to tap into our sexual energy we're able to create on new levels right without giving that away when we have sexual intercourse we actually diminish our creativity and so it feels like here you've either chosen celibacy or you're choosing to be single for a time to truly create what it is that you want and let that sexual energy go up through the kundalini channel and release which is helping you reconnect on a higher level yeah, I just see it like shooting up. I see this energy like shooting up towards your crown chakra and really allowing you to open up to this really beautiful energy that's coming in. And this triggers people because it's it's unusual, it's unknown, and they don't know how to do it. You know, we have the seven of coins here with the nine of swords showing that you have let go of so many worries about how people have seen you and you've, you're doing something that's so different from what most people know you as. So maybe people know you as someone who works a nine to five usually, and now you're owning your own business, doing something that you never even thought that you'd be doing. And so it's like when people tried to follow suit, they realized that they, they didn't have those same abilities that you have. You truly have found a part of yourself that was covered up for a long time, and you're really embracing that part of yourself and not trying to run from it. And honestly, Pile 2, I feel like that came from a lot of time really trying to own yourself and really understanding yourself because it does feel like you had some resistance in the beginning. You know, this is not something that just happened overnight where suddenly you were just ready to embrace the spiritual journey, ready to embrace the spiritual side. You may have had a lot of trials and tribulations that led you to finding out more about yourself and more about 
the journey in itself because that's something that was calling you to free your soul and there may have been a lot of resistance there for you and it's the thing that no one is seeing that resistance right they're not seeing that you went through your own problems to get to where you are now but it does trigger them the fact that you're able to lean into your intuition and really really own that you're able to lean into your psychic gifts and trust what you're being shown yeah it looks really impulsive to others like you you're you're doing it on an impulse like you didn't you they're not understanding that this was a calling wow okay so these cards flew out i guess i will take them so <laughs> i was gonna put them back in but source said no so we're gonna take them wasn't going to do a four card spread, but there's a reason for everything. So we're going to do it on the bottom. Yeah, we have the ten of cups in the upright. Yeah, you're being a leader here. You outgrew something that was potentially dangerous for you, something that was keeping you locked away and something where people were just constantly in your business, you know, constantly wanting to know how you were doing the things that you were doing. They didn't want to give to you and you had to move away from that. And in moving away from that, you really grew into yourself. So again, this is pointing towards this is people who know you. And you're busy growing and glowing and being your amazing self, which you should always do, right? And because of that, yeah, because of that, like these individuals don't recognize that everybody has a choice to do this. Like, why do you trigger them? Because you have big things happening to you. You chose something for yourself, you know, and really, I feel like people get it so twisted. It's like we all have a calling, you know, like all of us have something that's really, really wanting to find expression in our lives. And eventually we'll all find that if we're seeking it, right, if we're seeking it. Not everybody is seeking it because not everyone can be original, right, because they're so used to following the crowd and they don't know how to break free from that. But we see here that you were able to break free from that. And so it's like, oh, well, pile two has found their calling. So let me just copy them. That's what it feels like. But then when they try to copy you, they get so frustrated. They are disconnected. They're not getting the same type of results that you are. They're not, you know, and especially if it's a psychic gift, I feel like it's something that you had to take time to uncover. Even though you knew it was always there, you knew it was in the background. But I do feel like for you, Pile 2, many of you really, really denied your gift for a long time. And so for you to open up to your gift and say, this is a part of me. This is who I am. You know, that was something that you had to choose to do here. And in choosing to do that, it opened your world to a whole new world, <laughs> a whole new place I never knew, right? Like a whole new world was opened up to you. That's it. That's it. It's like, and that's what they're not seeing. Like they don't see it that way. They see it from the outside looking in and just this little snippet of your life right just this little snippet of what you're doing and so there's this immaturity that they're trying there's some people here who are trying to block you from your blessings because they're so triggered by you they're trying to come in and get you to pay attention to them usually this does talk about someone who's showing up in a very immature sexual energy and it's interesting because this also came out in pile number one completely different message but it did come out in pile number one and it was talking about how you know they wanted this sexual connection so i do feel like you do have people who want a sexual connection with you but honestly the energy that i'm getting here is that because you exude so much sexual energy in yourself creative sexual energy that it gets people twisted <laughs> and they think that oh if I go around and sleep around, somehow magically, I'm going to turn into this grounded, emotionally mature person who's able to lead others. And like I said, for you, I feel like it's the complete opposite where it's like you kind of become a monk or a nun or just completely disconnected from the sexual energy of others so that you can really work on yourself. And that's why it's like a lot of people see this as you did something very impulsive and like wasn't actually warranted for but it's taken you a long time to get here and so a lot of people are triggered by the fact that you're so you like your energy is so so sexy like i don't know how else to say it 
I don't. It's like, it's, it's, it's seeing that, you know, people are so involved in your life. And this could be an overbearing mother. This could be a mother with excessive habit to get into your life and find out each and every movement that you're making. Uh, you know, we did see that here with the moon on the bottom as well. This does talk about the mother wound, someone who's being overly nosy, someone who does not want to equal give and take. So that is a message for some. But what this is really talking about is that people are not seeing that it's actually through you healing the mother wound. You learn to nurture yourself and not need to have a connection. It's okay to want it. And maybe in wanting it, you've been able to manifest that, right? But you learned the difference between needs and wants. And you took that and used it to your advantage and went towards something that's fulfilling something where you're actually helping other people find their way you're actually helping serve humanity and the conscious collect or the the collective and the consciousness of the collective and raising the vibration of them and so there's people around you who see you doing this and they can't quite cope with the fact that you're actually helping other people because they don't see it they don't they're like, oh, well, they're just sexy now, and so everybody wants a piece of them, right? So maybe if I do the same thing, everybody will want a piece of me, and that is not how it works at all, right? And others are thinking that they're triggered by you because you're overly protective of your energy. Like, you don't give them your energy anymore. Like, you're very stingy with your energy as well as you should be because you didn't get to where you were going by giving your energy away freely. You learned that lesson. That's long gone. We're not going to continue on that path, right? And so right now things are really happening for you with this two of wands next to this five of coins energy. This is like things are really changing for you. Things are really happening, but it's only because you recognized that you had a choice to leave behind that resistance to your gift right the the five of coins is it's fairly simple in the fact that either in the upright or the reverse it basically means very similar things but it's like a huge change on the horizon but it can also talk about a resistance to a new element and that's why we have that here it's like showing that you resisted that psychic energy you resisted your gift okay it doesn't even have to be psychic energy it could be that maybe you're an artist and you didn't know that. And then one day you picked up the paintbrush or you picked up a pencil and you started drawing and it was actually really good. And you were like, whoa, okay, this was just a fluke. And then you tried it again and you were able to replicate it, but it was better this time. And, and you kept trying it and it was, but there's still resistance. It's like you didn't believe it. You were like, no, no, it just, this is beginner's luck. Like this can't be a real thing. Like, no, I could never draw when I was younger. And then you were like, stop and think about it. You're like, did I actually even try when I was younger? And you realize that no, you just didn't because everybody said that you couldn't draw or whatever it is, right? Again, that idea that there's people above you that were nosy trying to keep you away from this. And so we see here that you made a choice to kind of like explore that even though you were resistant to it. You made a choice to explore that and now you are letting go of the old belief systems that you held when it came to how you believed yourself, right? And you always had the option. You always had the options available to you, but because you chose yourself, you're actually blocking people from affecting your life. So it doesn't matter if people send you bad juju. It doesn't matter if people send you negative energy. It doesn't matter if people are like, you know, trying to curse you. In other words, because you chose yourself and like basically put up this impenetrable shield around you and equally so so i'm saying like there's like because you're protecting your sexual being as well like you know i don't talk about this a lot on my readings i've definitely had podcasts that have talked about this but they're Okay, what's about to come? It might seem crude, and I apologize. It's not that. It's just that when we think of intercourse, right, and you think of the classic intercourse, this is just the classic intercourse, and just remember this is the masculine energy and the feminine energy. It doesn't matter what, you're, what you identify with, okay, that doesn't matter, but the masculine 
is like a rod and the feminine is the receptive okay and so for for many of you on here you're a feminine energy okay but either way that connection is to remember that the sacred space is being penetrated and whenever the masculine releases and again it doesn't matter if the masculine energy is a woman or a man or non-binary that does not matter but the one who identifies with the masculine when the masculine releases all that energy gets sucked into the feminine's womb and she is the one who and i say she because it's just easier but it, it doesn't matter okay the feminine is the one who has to transmute that energy into something good or what usually happens is that's where soul ties and soul connections come from and those old ties get stuck in our lives because we don't know how to transmute that energy in a safe and proper way for us and so it just ends up sitting in our womb and creating a lot of discord you will understand this pile too because i feel like you've learned how to transmute that energy into something conducive for your journey and moving moving on up that's what i just heard right now moving on up <laughs> Oh, so you're letting things go and that's also triggering others because when you transmute that really heavy energy that is heavy energy because think about it that's the masculine's problems their worries their concerns their fears getting left inside the the feminine and again it's not necessarily the idea of penetration it's just the idea of release okay it's that energetic release and the energy is how they that, how they absorb that and so this is talking about how you've learned to transmute that energy the same thing though with the masculine if you're masculine on here watching it's this energy of you've learned to transmute your own worries your own fears your own hardships into something that's conducive for your journey which is also playing on this how you are in this space of sexual transmutation and really shining out to the world from this very bright energy it's amazing how much better we feel when we take care of ourselves in that way right when we don't just let anybody and everyone come into our energy we don't just let ourselves lay down with anyone and everyone you know it's amazing how much different our energy feels and it's almost like you got a taste of that whether that was through your own choice or just through a circumstance you got your you got a a taste of that and you recognize that wow i feel so different you know <laughs> or it could have been like how it was for me in my case the whole thing was source forced me into it because everyone that i i laid down with made me sick for i i can't even tell you how it was it was awful so yeah it's it could have been that you were forced into it by source or it was a choice that you made or it was a circumstance outside of your control everybody's story is going to be different and that's fine but that's really what it feels like and even if you have a partner don't feel like oh my gosh well i have a partner so obviously that's not me it's just saying that you've learned to balance the energy between you and your partner so you're no longer taking on their troubles you've learned that you can protect yourself from that and that's a very powerful place to be at and that's why you trigger so many people because you're doing something that so many people don't know how to do in this world that revolves around sex it really does we have house two with physical security possessions material values and self-worth so again this idea of self-worth you may have come from pile number one as well if not if you were drawn to pile number one there might be messages for you there but you're never obligated to watch those yeah transform right this is something you've transformed your self-worth like how you view yourself and how you view your energy it's more than just yourself like this is like you've always held yourself in high regard i feel and even if you haven't like that's part of it but i feel like this is like how you view your energy and that's something that's so precious in a world where no one really realizes that energy is the most valuable currency that we own look you're so connected invocation with ceremony you are so connected to source here you are so connected to your guides you are so connected psychically you're very 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 psychic very gifted in this in this sense okay but it's more than 
like, even though that was in pile number one, it's not, it's just a different energy. This is so different. It's like you were guided to change the way that you see relationships and connections physically. Look, I can't, I cannot with this. Connections, how you see your connections physically. <laughs> connection if you didn't know what the card is it's tarantula connection by the way that's why i just put it down because it was just it's connection see that's what i'm saying life is speeding up yeah and you're about to manifest a lot of good things in your life right now okay let's get one of these how does pile number two trigger? Look, this is such a trip. Look at this card. Before I read it, just look at this card. Like, hello. It says, real passion. Stop wasting time in dead-end jobs and find your true passion. It's fine to experiment, but don't settle for less than you truly deserve. Like, you've embraced real passion for life rather than passion for other people and it's not that you don't have passion for other people it's just that the main thing is living and loving your life like relationships business partners office love affairs and communication with co-workers are highlighted now make a choice make choices with extreme care look i cannot make up this energy is next level right now like it is next level you, and for those of you that came from pile one, you might think that this is a very similar energy, but it's not because it's talking about an entirely different aspect of spirituality. This is your sexual energy. This is the Kundalini rising, right? And not everybody will go through that. Like not everybody can experience a Kundalini rising because that's just a very spiritual journey, but it doesn't mean that we can't start, right and that's what i feel like it's like some of you are pretty far along some of you are just starting but it's actually very rare for for people to reach enlightenment through kundalini and and i know that's not going to set well with everyone but just remember if it were easy anyone would do it and a lot of people make it seem like oh it's so easy to reach it but it's really not i've read tons of texts on it it's not something i'll go into here but it's actually not, it takes a lot of practice and time, and it's a very sacred practice that we can do, but it's something that takes a ton of commitment, okay? Broken, they didn't keep the promises they made. They may break your heart, but not your spirit. So, yeah, you've gone through a lot of broken situations and learned how to heal yourself from that. Yeah, solitude. Again, this idea of hermit mode. So, again pointing towards celibacy or the choosing just not to be in a relationship some of you are just choosing not to or some of you are choosing that even though you're in a relationship you're in the process of healing yeah equality recognizing how this brings equal relationships into your life this is what really triggers people about you is because you realize that you deserve someone who's equal in your life and that it's not even about cutting people out. It's just realizing this. It actually is a deterrent for many people because they don't want to level up to your level. Know your worth. Know your worth. Your self-worth. Yeah. This is very powerful. Like, you know that you're worthy of equal partners. And it's like, if I don't get one, I'd rather just be happy and alone. And that triggers so many people because they want to have that label in their life. Like, it's almost like if I don't have that label, then there's something super wrong with me. And there's not, right? But not everybody sees that. Games, playing it love, but not serious about keeping it. Know what you want and be honest. This is what you trigger. This is the shadow aspect of this reading. You trigger the fact that you're not here to play games. I don't play like that. You either show up or don't show up at all. Either way, no skin off my back. But it's it's because you have this very strong sexual appeal. Like you have this very strong sexual energy about you that's very powerful. And so it draws in a lot of people. But it equally so, it's like a moth to the flame. Like you don't always draw in good energy, right? Like... And you're aware of that, but you also don't play games. Like, the minute someone plays games, like, you just bow out gracefully. You're like, good luck. Bye. You know? Divine guidance. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 
Oh my gosh, so this just really goes back to exactly what I was saying. Like, I feel like Source, like, like, why they even had me mention a portion of my story is because I feel like Source, like, forced you into this type of growth for a reason, right? For a reason. Like, you're on this journey for a reason, and you have to do this for a reason. You have to choose this moment of solitude for a reason, for your own worth. Like, you've been in a lot of stinky situations, right? <laughs> With the skunk here, even a lot of really yucky situations. Here's the insignia if you'd like to pause this and screenshot it and carry it with you. It says it's best to watch out for a sign before moving forward. You are ready to enjoy the fruits of your hard work, but don't decide to embrace any one aspect of your life just yet. Wait for some more information to emerge before making that choice. This card can also mean that it's best to use your intuition to make the final call rather than your rational mind. Try to read the signs carefully and trust your instincts. Although it may be frustrating to wait, proceeding when time is right will be much more rewarding and the affirmation is i am patient so again hinting at you know when to follow your intuition you're a very intuitive person you have those psychic abilities where it's like you're getting guided psychically to go towards what is rightfully yours and without question and part of the time like it's like you may dabble in dating with others or whatever and it's like you just keep realizing that so many people are not willing to step up to that level of healing and it's nothing like I feel like you're not even mad about it you're just kind of like nope that's cool and some of you may be really upset about it but you're 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 the slow journey is teaching you patience like nothing before right so this is what I see for you if you feel like this is your reading is there a frog emoji leave a little frog emoji down below and say I jump into listening to divine guidance knowing that I'm headed towards what is mine on my journey. Leave me a thumbs up. I'm going to go ahead and leave it there and get on out of here. I do want to take a quick second to thank your guides, your spirit messengers, your angel source, and my guides for coming together to give us this message. And until next time, pile number two, stay human. Bye. Hello, my fellow human. If you were drawn to this beautiful piece of amethyst, or if you were drawn to this card during the shuffle, then this is going to be a reading on how do you trigger people. I do want to say thank you to anyone and everyone that continues to be a supportive part of this journey and this channel. I'm truly honored to be sharing this time and space with you. For those of you that are new here, welcome. This is that reminder that we are all here sharing this human experience and that this is a safe space for you to show up as your highest, most aligned, loving, authentic self. Please keep in mind that these are general readings, so take what resonates, leave what does not, knowing that you can always like, comment, and subscribe down below, and that'll help me get you out more resonant readings. Uh, if you're interested in supporting the channel further, you'll find all those links below in the description box. You can email me for a personal reading, and I will get you out further information from there. You may follow me on over to my podcast at Scatter Love Radio on Spotify. And if you're interested in joining as a member, the link will take you to the landing page that shows you the three options that I have available as well as what comes with each option. So I do hope to see you over on memberships. If not, thank you for your continued support here. So let's go ahead and hop to it and get into your reading. I do quickly just want to mention that if you skipped over the intro, that's fine. Uh, we are changing the way that we're doing things on the channel. We're focusing, focusing, I can talk. We are focusing more back on you as the collective rather than what everyone else is thinking of you because when we're focused on what everyone else is thinking of you we're taking away precious valuable time for us to continue working on our skills our goals our ourselves right and so when we're worried about how other people are thinking about us or whether or not we're revolving around their world it really does distract us from focusing on ourselves and it can really fuel us up in our emotional ego and that's exactly what we're trying to walk away from and overcome is our emotional ego so when we refocus it back on ourselves the things that come up in today's reading are all about us being able to build more on our strengths our abilities our skills and our talents okay so that being said for pile number three source how does pile number three trigger other people how does pile number three trigger other people's source? What would you like to say to pile number three? How do they trigger other people's source? 
Oh, flying in. So we've got the fourth house. We've got Cancer energy and we've got Neptune. Very watery energy. Uh, this happened in one of the other piles as well. But we definitely have this very nurturing energy here and elusive. Very elusive energy. You're mysterious. You're different. You're very, like... Like, you don't even belong in this time frame, is what I'm hearing. You just... And it's like they can't even pinpoint what time frame that you belong in. Whether you belong in an older time frame or a futuristic time frame. It's like... But you're just out of place here in this moment because you're so loving and kind and loyal and nurturing and healing. And what triggers people is the fact that because you're so kind and compassionate not only to others but to yourself you really allow space to show up like that for others and it actually forces others to see all the things that they believed in trusted in as an illusion and so you're shaking the very foundations that their core was built on and that's what really triggers them i mean can you imagine you probably already know you went through it yourself when you were spiritually awakening to yourself and you know had to really shake up those foundations that were just false illusions that we were believing in right well you actually heal others by making them see this within themselves simply by being a loving kinding 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 yeah you're a kinding kind of person <laughs> uh, you're a loving kind caring and compassionate type of individual who really just allows people to show up as they are you know, we can't change others, and so there's no need to force others to change. There's no need to carry others either. And we can only help those who wish to help themselves. But it doesn't mean that you're without bringing healing into those situations based on the fact that you've healed yourself. And that's actually one of the most healing things that we can offer the world is when we heal ourselves. And so you've definitely learned how to overcome the mother wound here. You have overcome the illusion of separation here. You have overcome this belief that you're higher up or above other people or even below. Maybe you thought at one point you were below other people. Like you're right here on the same level with so many individuals, with everybody in the world. And that's something that people are triggered by because so much of the time we want our emotional ego to be validated and saying that we're better than someone that we're over someone else or that we're doing better than another person and for you it's like you see them on their journey and they're doing exactly what they need to be how can that not be the best version of themselves in that moment no matter where they're at even if they're in a low vibration and that's what's so triggering to people because when it's like you're coming across someone who is in a low vibration like you're not trying to force them to change or come up to your vibration instead you're allowing them to just be exactly who they want to be in that moment and because it doesn't affect you or get responses or reactions like it does from other people that's what's so triggering it's like how come they don't get triggered by me or how come they don't respond or react to me the way that other people do like i always get this reaction from everyone else and they expect that from you right when we hold expectations we're always disappointed but you are the opposite of that where you don't hold expectations over another person you're just like let them be who they are that's going to tell me what i need to know and that's what triggers other and it's it's really because you're so healing you're a healer and being a healer is always going to be triggering and through that you've also healed so much of yourself on your journey and that is something that triggers others as well because it really really does highlight where they're at on their journey but here it's highlighting the illusions this isn't even the guilt and the addictions which we can see with neptune they're showing me here this is the illusions that their emotional egos are built on so where it's like that response or that reaction that's something that like when they get that response or the reaction it's either clarifying or confirming what their emotional ego has convinced them of or it's making them feel like they get an emotional boost from that right and you don't give them that <laughs> like that's just non-existent for you it's just kind of like oh okay or like when someone's like acting out, you're just like, oh, okay. You know, it's like the same no matter what. Without emotion. It's not without kindness. It's without emotion, right? And that's that's a very different way of being. So let's get some tarot on it and see further into this source. 
How does pile number three trigger other people? And that's something that Source is saying here too, to continue working on your love journey for self, because the more you love yourself, yes, the more you will trigger others, but the more healing you're going to be to those that are receptive of it as well. So how does pile number three trigger other people, Source? And as always, if you've watched all three piles, leave a purple heart down below and let me know. Say, I made it. I know what that means. That's always for those of you that choose to spend the whole reading with me, which I truly do appreciate. So how does pile number three trigger people, Source? Well, okay. They want this one first. And this one. Thank you, Source. Okay, how does pile number three trigger people, Source? Okay, yeah. It's like you're capable of transmuting low vibrational energy, right? Hold on just a second. I'm going to move the camera a tad here. Okay, there we go. You're capable of transmuting low vibrational energy, right? This is a gift. With the ace of coins on the bottom here, source, source at telling you that this is a gift. When someone comes into a low vibration and is trying to pour that, like dump their garbage on you, in other words, you have this like way to weave it in such a way that it's no longer low vibrational. Instead, you're raising the vibration of them and it's raising the vibration of the connection between the two of you, which is in turn raising the vibration of the planet as a whole, even if it's one drop at a time. But what it is, is it's like that actually leaves people feeling exhausted. It leaves pe people feeling anxious. It leaves people feeling disconnected because healing does that, right? Healing makes us feel a lot of different ways. Sometimes it feels good, but other times, which most of the times it's irritating. It's, <coughs> it's not fun. Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Wow. Exactly. It's not fun, right? It's not something that we enjoy. You know, think about like when you get a cut or something, there's always that period where it aches and it hurts and it's a painful thing. And then when it begins to heal, it just itches like crazy. And it's like, oh, I just want to tear it open again. Right. But then that just makes it worse. And it's like, that's exactly the type of energy that you bring without it's 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 without you trying. You just. So I did get a channel message before I even started and they're reminding me of it because I totally forgot about it until just now. You have a solution for problems. Or you may see six a lot, like the number six or like a combination of six a lot. And it's like they're saying that you have solutions to problems that people would have not had a solution to. And it's like you tell them, well, you know, you could always try this. And it's like you're not telling them that they have to do that. You're not telling them that. It's like you're giving them an option to see it from an entirely different viewpoint and that makes them feel inferior like why didn't i think of that right yeah because they want to control everything because they're stuck in the illusion look i cannot make this up the nine of of cups in the reverse is talking about the illusion the discord and the illusions the eight of of swords here in the upright talks about control anxiety through control here's the fly welcoming us into the reading and you have the queen of cups here on the bottom showing that you are someone who sees all of this but you're also receiving messages from beyond and downloads from beyond because of your wisdom and your ability to tap into that and that's how you choose to take action in the future. It's like there's always an opportunity. There's always an option. We don't have to be captured or captivated by these problems that we have in our lives. But so many people want to stay in this energy of controlling the illusion, staying stuck with their ego, staying stuck in the, in the dream world, if you will, or in the non-reality. And the gift that you have is the ability to transmute this, the ability to change this. It's like, it's, it's more than just transmuting it. It's literally like you take that energy away from them and you spin it all around and you shake it up a little bit with a piece of ice and then you throw it back out and it's completely changed for forever. And no matter what they do, they cannot go back to how they were before and that's why they're feeling all these types of way. So you definitely trigger people because you give them solutions to problems that leave them feeling completely 
anxious, worried. It's like, you know, have you ever had those people that they just worry and they're worrying about nothing, but worry is taking over their lives and it's such a main theme in their lives that it's like you tell them, you're like, why are you worrying? And the first thing they say is, I don't know. It's just what I do. And it's like, okay. And you might ask them, does worrying ever solve anything? And they're like, well, no, but I can't change it. And then you ask them why. And they're like, because that's just who I am. And it's like, well, I used to worry too, but then I found out. And then you give them whatever the solution is, right? Because it's going to be different for everyone. You give them whatever the solution is. You found out, oh, oh you know, like I, I used to worry too, but then I started meditating. And I realized that all worrying did was make me feel awful because of the situation. And it never solved any problems. Or again, coming back to if there is a solution, then I focus on the solution. And if it doesn't have a solution, then I know worrying isn't going to change it. And it's like you give them such logical answers, they can't argue with it. But then that just it elicits anger within them, which is the trigger, right? It elicits anger within them, but they can't come back and tell you you're wrong because they know that you're right. Like it's sharing a very deep truth with them, something that reminds them of home. Yeah, and they'd rather stay in this place of feeling stuck because that's what they're so used to. These are individuals like you're actually a healer of the South Node energy. So it's like you go around and you're, you are directed by source and your guides and your angels to different various places. And you're put into these places to begin helping them change this energy. And it's like source is the one that takes it from you and turns it into something different. And so when it's given back to them, they can't they can't go back to not knowing, right? Like now they know and they can't go back to unknowing. And it's like no matter how hard they try, it's like then all of a sudden a whole bunch of things start happening to them. And they do blame you for it. But at the same time, there's also an admiration coming through here as well because it's like, no one's ever done that to them. And so it's like they're so used to people just reacting to them. And you came in with a response of compassion and kindness. And you also weren't bothered by the fact that they didn't choose to listen to your resolution or your solution. You just gave it and then you just kept floating on by. And, and forever their lives were changed. And that's why they're triggered by you. It's like there's no getting out, out of that. Right? There's no getting out of it. You take them from a karmic situation that's very unstable and you actually bring a completion to it right away. And so it's like skipping steps because they've been on the same step for too long. And so your energy somehow reaches out and grabs them by the back of their shirt and lifts them up a couple of steps. It's like, okay, we're not going back down to that step. Like you're done with that lesson. You've gone done, learned the lesson. You're just being stubborn and wanting to stay in it. And they're, that's why they get triggered by you. Like <laughs> That's like source like comes in and there's something about your aura that forces them to spiritually evolve and they're mad about it because they didn't want to spiritually evolve and they're like oh like I just wanted to stay how things were like people actually reacted to me this way and now I'm changed and now I realize that like I can't keep acting that way and I have to change something but I didn't want to change something why because that's work and I don't want to work and I don't want to work on me and it's like and they can stay at that new level that's fine but it's they can't go backwards like there's no going backwards after having met you <laughs> that's it there's just no we're not going backwards now okay that's it i've I, you've moved up this is the gift okay and it really is a gift this is a beautiful gift to have actually this is an amazing gift to have but it really frustrates a lot of people because they just weren't ready to move, even though their soul was ready, their ego, right? Their ego was not ready to move. These are individuals you're purposefully put near people who have highly narcissistic tendencies, maybe a lot of high narcissists, sociopaths, like source intentionally puts you around people like that because you're the vessel through which source kind of reaches out and goes, <laughs> okay, we're moving on now. And they're like left like, huh? What the heck just happened? What? 
Nothing's the same. Why isn't it the same? Why can't I act the way I was before? Why don't I get all the same things that I was getting before? Well, it's because Pile 3 was brought to you and you there again you're like this vessel where it's like and it's it's not supposed to be mean but that's just basically what they're showing me it's like source reaches out through you and gives them a spiritual slap go on with the smack smack boom boom get out right like that's it that's it it's like <laughs> oh they're so silly today and so that's why you you trigger people like that's it's your gift but there's no getting away from it like you're a healer it's something you're meant to do yeah, give and receive love. Find value and see beauty. Exactly. Like, you come from this place that's so centered in love because you love yourself. You're a loving, kind, compassionate person. And you see that everybody's working on their own selves. And it's like, I can still show up in love and kindness no matter what's going on with this person. Whether they're a narcissist or a sociopath, it doesn't matter. You still alter their state of consciousness just by being you. And that's the gift that Source gave you with the Ace of Coins here in the upright. Look, radically change. I cannot make this stuff up. Uranus, you radically change people's lives just by them coming into contact with you. There's no going back. Pisces energy, intimacy, intuition, and compassion. So you could very well be Pisces. You could have Cancer, highly aspect. You could have Pisces and Venus, Pisces and Uranus and Neptune, Cancer and Uranus, Neptune or Venus. You could have the fourth house in Pisces or Cancer, Neptune in the fourth house as well, or Cancer, Capricorn, or Taurus in any one of those placements, okay? But definitely very watery. You wouldn't surprise me if you have a Scorpio rising or a Scorpio moon either, okay? Or even Scorpio in the eighth house, okay? What else, Source? What else would you like to tell pile number one? How do they trigger people? Yeah, you create movement in their lives. They were not looking for this movement, but there's no going back. Like, that's it. It's once the movement has happened, that's it. There's no going back, okay? There's, it's kind of like when you were on your spiritual journey or as you're on your spiritual journey, once you learn something about yourself, there is no unlearning it. And you're just like this, you're basically a walking Saturn, if you will. <laughs> right like you that's it you're just basically making people face their their karma and really face these hardships and learn about their hardships and it's difficult and what's taken you years and years and years like you do in a matter of seconds to others and you might be like well that's not fair like what no yeah but you were actively learning how to better yourself like you wanted to receive that information you wanted to receive that growth you are purposely have this gift to inspire others that just would stay stagnant otherwise. Like if you didn't exist, that would be a huge detriment to all of humanity because it, you wouldn't raise the vibration of these individuals. So that's why it's so it's so powerful, right? It's a powerful thing. Yeah, it's a responsibility. I didn't even know this is on the bottom of the deck. It's a responsibility that you have to do. And it's not even something that, like, you're knowingly doing, right? It's not something that you're, like, going out of your way. Like, oh, I have to get in contact with that person so I can raise their vibration. It's like Source is using you as a pawn in life because Source knows that you trust the guidance that you're being given. And because of that, Source uses you as this channel for for whatever source has right whatever the universe's plans are we have open to the infinite possibilities yeah you open people's spiritual minds and their third eyes and it's like where it was once closed even if it's like still a sleepy eye it's all red with sleep and it's got lagania in it it's all scratchy like they don't want to open it i can barely open my eyes type feeling like you still force them to open their eyes so it's almost like you reach in and you're like open up <laughs> Right? And they're like, no! Oh, it won't close. I can't close it how it was before. Why? Now it's open. Right? And I feel like this just happens as you continue to weave your life into existence. Like, the more that you continue to walk towards your dreams, the more that this happens. Like, it's not something... Look, underneath that, 
I cannot make this up. We have truth transcends illusion with number 22. And behind that, transformation is beautiful with number 11. And equally so, look, nothing is wasted. And watch your words. You're not out here being like, oh, you know, narcissists deserve to go to H-E-L-L. -L. Like, like, you're not out here telling people about those people, like, that they deserve to get their kermuffets or whatever it is. You're just like, no, like, we need to see everybody through eyes of love. And sometimes that's the most difficult thing, right? This is because you recognize that everybody's coming from a hurt place. And that's something that gives you a lot more power than others, right? And it's not, again, you're not better off or worse off than anyone else. You just have this different gift because Source is able to channel different type of energy through you. Because Source trusts you with this. Like, that's, it's not that anyone else can't have this gift. It's just the trust, the trust that you built with Source is so next level. Yeah, flashback. People from the past return. You may work with a previous coworker, take back an old job. You get a second chance. This is what happens. This, okay, this makes so much, thank you, Source. Like, it was like, how do I explain this even better? Source is showing, like, you make people go into a flashback and it immediately heals it. It's like, you know when you remember old things that happened to you and you have to walk through the emotion? That's what you do. You bring back flashbacks of people's past and you make them heal that right there on the spot. So we're going to look at the shadow aspect that's coming through here. Struggle. You feel like you aren't being supported. If it's not a team effort, it's best to stand alone. And I feel like for you, Pile 3, you're definitely some of my collective that have no friends. You don't have a huge friend list. Like, you don't have a lot of support. You don't have a lot of people in your life because this happens to everyone that you encounter. Whether they're enlightened, whether they're not, it like happens to everyone that you encounter because Source is using you as a vessel. But you opened yourself up to that. You trust the process and you're like willing to be there for Source's bidding. And it's like it may be frustrating at times, but it's also been extremely beautiful for you at times as well. And so you've recognized that not a lot of people want to support you because they've been triggered by you in various ways. And so it's like or the support that you do get comes from people that appreciate the change that you bring in their lives like you help them raise up to a level that they feel like they've been stuck at and they feel so free that they're like yes this is my people like pile three is my people like i love them they're so awesome i'm so glad but somehow some shape or form it's always people who are so far from you like it's not people you can see face to face or very rarely is right or the people that are in your soul tribe you you it's always like this like it's always like two passing stars in the night like Oh, hey, that's my people. Hey, it's great to see you. Bye. Like, that's what it feels like for you, Pile 3. Yeah, emergence. You're emerging. Like, you are growing. You're tra You're changing. Dragonfly. Dragonfly came out twice here for you. So dragonflies are very important for you. For your journey. This is something that you were sleeping on for a while. And then when you woke to it, like, it just... Source is like, yes, Pile 3 is awake. Yes, I'm so happy. Like, boom, and then the magic starts happening, right? So we have happiness. Dolphin, like, you found contentment with life. Again, number six here is the solution, resolution, seeing yourself through eyes of love. Like, that's what happens is, like, you're so happy and content with yourself and where you are on your journey that that happiness is how you're able to help bring happiness some sort of solution logic reasoning to others but not be bothered by the outcome yeah, and you're so prosperous so this is another thing that triggers people is because you're in this prosperous energy you're manifesting beautiful things into your life like it's even though you struggle at times even though you've been through some hardships at time and you're attracted to a lot of people who struggle like you are manifesting beautiful things because of that trapped you feel stuck in your current situation, but you have options. Look for another job while keeping the one you have for... I cannot. This is a situation like people feel, felt trapped, but they didn't want to change. They were happy being stuck. And look, I know I showed the bottom of this deck, but look at how many cards are in this deck. Like this is thicker than my tarot deck, okay? there's I think there's 80 some cards in here. And the one card that comes out talks about you have options in a stuck situation, and that's what we're talking about on this reading. 
Like, that's absolutely next level. Next level. Like, I just, I know that those of you, you guys know my gift. Like, you see the gift. It's not my gift. It's sourced through me. Like, I will always say that. But it's just sometimes it just leaves me speechless because it's just, it's so incredible how Source works. So you feel like you've been abandoned, but there's a deeper connection coming. You are the one that Source takes to the lost souls. The island of misfit toys. Like people have been hurt. And it's like you recognize that they've been hurt. It's like you're, you're not judging them based on their actions. You're judging them based on the inner child that's been wounded. And you see that. And you you are just different. You're so different than so many people. Like you're not out here looking for revenge. You're not out here looking to get back at those that hurt you. It's like maybe at one point you were. But you've evolved into this place of seeing everyone through eyes of unconditional love. And you yourself walk in a space of unconditional love and through that you're just a walking healing prosperous light in the world it's, it's really beautiful so let's take a look at your oracle card and we're going to read this from the book navigation this makes so much sense with what i was saying and i believe this is a lionfish here too they're actually really cool i've seen them at the aquarium quite a few times at different aquariums i visited they're so cool but navigation, it's like I said, it's like Source trusts you to listen to them when they say, I need you to go here. And you're like, okay, cool. So you go there. You don't even question it, right? Like they navigate you to the, the lost souls. They navigate you to people who are refusing to change. Here's the insignia if you'd like to screenshot this and copy that. It says it's time to tap into your innate navigation system and plan your trip. Determine where you are heading and imagine the final destination where you see yourself at peace. After all, even the best GPS wouldn't do you any good if you don't know the address. Determine where you are right now in your life. Clarify your vision and check what attitudes will help you along the way. Forming a new healthy habit doesn't come easily, but you can prevail with a strong will and determination. This card also symbolizes finding your calling and purpose in life says this is my goal or state your goal in a very concise sentence and so it's like you've embraced being a healer okay like you know that's who you are you're you're fine with that like you recognize that but you're like a different type of healer where you embrace a higher love and a higher calling like we're all here to tap into that right but for you it comes easily like and it didn't come easily but now it does right you had to suffer to get to where you are but through your suffering you began to see people from different places through eyes of love even people who most most individuals wouldn't give a chance to like you still give a chance to even if they're not on the same vibratory level as you so again source navigates you to lost souls who feel trapped who otherwise would be turned away or shut off right the island of misfit toys no one wants to deal with them but you give them love and kindness and compassion even if you're just two passing people like you forever change their lives and this is why people get triggered by you because the very people that you're sent to heal are the very people that you trigger it's it's absolutely incredible right own yourself own yourself you deserve that because this is a powerful gift so if this is your reading leave you know what leave a little ocean emoji down below and say i flow with the process of source energy or God energy or universe energy, whatever you call it, I flow the process of source energy knowing that my life mission is driving me straight towards my goals and my dreams. Leave me a thumbs up. I'm going to go ahead and leave it there and get on out of here. I do want to take a quick second to thank your guides, your spirit messengers, your angel source, and my guides for coming together to give us this message. And until next time, pile number three, stay human. Bye.